Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we'll make some super soft burger buns. To achieve this soft texture, we can use something called a tangzhong, which is a roux made out of milk and flour. It's basically the Japanese milk bread recipe, and it's very versatile. You can use it for many applications. Hot dog buns, burger buns, you make a whole loaf of bread. Quite similar to brioche, but not as rich. And as always, you'll find the full recipe with all the details with metric and imperial units down in the description box. But first, let's see what equipment we need. A tray with some non-stick paper, a bowl, scales, dough scraper, you'll need a temperature probe and a brush. Now on to the ingredients. We'll need some strong white bread flour, some milk, some yeast, salt, sugar, some soft butter, an egg and some sesame seeds. So the first thing we need to do is make the roux. In a little pot, combine part of the milk and part of the flour and bring it over to the hob tub to cook. You'll find the exact amounts down in the description box. And did I mention that we need a little pot in a spatula? Because we do. Now we'll cook this flour and milk mixture on the hob on medium heat for around 5-7 to seven minutes. You want it to be really thick, but you don't want any floury lumps in it, so make sure you mix it properly. And once it's ready, get it in a little bowl and we'll cover it up. This will need to cool down completely before we use it, otherwise the dough will become too hot. There's not a huge amount, so it's not going to take too long in the fridge if you're in a rush. But even better still, you can make this a day ahead of time. Make sure that when you cover it up, that the cling film is touching the roux. If it's not, it will form a dry, hard skin. It will be difficult to work into the dough. Now once you're ready to make your dough, grab a bowl, add the rest of the milk, the yeast, add the salt and the sugar. Then add the softened butter and grab your roux out of the fridge and add that too. It'll be quite hard to begin with, but that's fine. Just use your spatula or your dough scraper and mash it all up. And make sure you mix this thoroughly. You want your sugar to dissolve. The last ingredient is the rest of the flour. Now grab your scraper and give it all a good mix. To avoid making a mess on your table, just bring the dough together in the bowl. And if the scraper can't do the job, continue on by hand. It will look like biscuit dough to begin with, but just keep working it and it will come together. And once it's all in one piece, tip it out on your table, start kneading it. It is quite a dry dough, so we use a regular kneading method. What I like to do is using the heel of my right hand, I press down and forwards, then using the fingers of my left hand, I fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand, then turn and repeat. The dough will get softer and softer as you go along, and this whole process should not take more than 5-7 to seven minutes. And once it's nice and smooth, it's ready for the first proof. Now get it in the bowl. And first thing you always do, take the temperature. We're using a small amount of yeast, so 25 to 26 degrees Celsius is just about right. Cover it up, let it ferment for one hour. If your dough is cooler, it will take longer. If it's warmer, it will take less time. To learn all about temperature control, click the link in the top right corner. After the first hour of fermentation, we'll give the dough a fold. Folding will achieve a couple of things. We'll degas the dough, create extra layers and glues and structure, and equalize the temperature. To perform a fold, place your dough out on the table, smooth side down, then flatten it out and fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until you reach the point where you started. Then tighten it against the table. You can pinch the bottom together, place it back into the bowl, smooth side pointing up. Now we can cover it up, let it ferment for one more hour. Now it should really start puffing up. And after the second proof, we can divide our dough. I would definitely suggest using your scales for this. You don't want to end up with different sized buns. Just weigh the whole piece of dough, divide it by four, and that's your bun. And then using your scraper, cut them down to size, weigh them out, and once they've all been divided, we're going to have to pre-shape them. Pre-shaping is important because at this point the dough is made up of little pieces, right? And what we need to do is hide those little pieces. And the pre-shaping step is quite easy. Once again, place your dough smooth side down, flatten it out, fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until you reach the point where you started, and tighten the ball against the table, pinch the bottom together, and place it back down, smooth side pointing up. Now we can cover them up and let them rest for around 30 minutes. The resting stage will give the dough another chance to ferment. But even more importantly than that, it will relax the gluten, it will make it easier for us to shape. 
And the final shaping step is just as simple as the pre-shaping. What you want to do is place your dough ball, smooth side pointing down, flatten it out again, then fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until you reach the point where you started and have a nice tight ball. Now tighten it against the table. You can pinch the bottom together again and that's your burger bun. And don't worry if you messed the first one up, you got three more to practice on. Now let's watch a close-up of this. You flatten the dough out, fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle. You see me reach the point where I started, flip the dough smooth side up again and tighten it against the table and that's it. Now finish the rest of the balls and they'll be ready for the final proof. We'll place them on a tray with non-stick paper. Make sure there's plenty of space between them. What I like to do is flatten them down a bit using my hands. This will make the diameter of the bun a little bit bigger. My kitchen was a bit cool on the day that I was filming this, so my buns took quite a while to rise. And I think I could have left them for a bit longer. And you should always keep that in mind. The conditions in every kitchen are different. You have to judge when your dough is ready. But a final fermentation of one to one and a half hours should be alright. And during that time you want to preheat your oven to 160 degrees C with a fan on. And make sure your buns double in size before you bake them. There's a couple more things we need to do before baking. We'll brush the buns with a mix of egg yolk and milk. This will give them a beautiful golden crust. And we'll brush them twice, so don't go too heavy on the first coat. Just brush them all over lightly, then leave them to dry for 5 minutes, then brush them once again. And after that, we'll sprinkle them with sesame seeds. And again, this is optional. You can sprinkle them with different seeds if you like, whatever. I like sesame for that classic burger bun look. And to really make them stick, you can press them in a little bit using your hand. And now we're ready to bake. Get them in the oven. They should not take more than 25 minutes or so. And once they're puffed up nicely and golden brown all over, they're done. There's one more step we can take to make them extra nice. You can grab your brush with some soft butter and brush them all over. This will really make them shine. You don't have to do this, but this is a really nice final touch. And that's your burger bun. Quite easy, right? And you can fill these buns with whatever you like. It doesn't have to be burger. But as always, if you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down in comments. And if you're not yet subscribed, consider subscribing. I make bread baking videos every Wednesday and Sunday. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.